Aloha friends, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you joined us last week, we made a cocktail called the Ankle Breaker. Tonight we're making one from New Orleans called the Bali... Bali. Almost said Bali High. Actually, this cocktail is called the Bali Bali, but it's from a place called the Bali High. And there were so many different places called the Bali High in the mid 50s, 60s, and uh, they attribute that mostly to the popularity of the, the musical South Pacific, which really blew the whole tiki thing wide open. At least it was a contributing factor. The Bali High was opened in 1952 in New Orleans. They say that Elvis Presley was a frequent customer. I can only imagine the king ordering one of these cocktails. Although, I don't think he drank, so maybe he didn't? Did he drink? Did Elvis drink? He smoked cigars. I don't even know if he smoked cigarettes, but if you know, mention it in the comments below. The Bali Bali is a 10 ingredient cocktail. It was served for $1 at the Bali High, and it has a very elaborate presentation. So let's get into it. The ingredients in the Bali Bali are lime, orange juice, pineapple juice. For the dark Jamaican rum, we're gonna be using Appleton Estate, the reserve blend. Cruzon for the light Virgin Islands rum, a dry gin, and this Hennessy cognac. I make my own simple syrup. This is one part water, one part sugar. Falernum from BG Reynolds, and the incredible passion fruit syrup from Small Hands. For the first ingredient is lime juice, and usually you can get about an ounce of lime juice from a lime. Let's see what this does for us here. It's about almost half an ounce. One ounce of lime juice. One ounce of orange juice. One ounce of pineapple juice, and I see this stuff used at tiki bars. Uh, you have to be sure to shake it up. Just ask Kelly Merrill. One half ounce of simple syrup. Half ounce of falernum. Half an ounce of passion fruit syrup. And that is the end of that bottle. <laughs> Small hands is super, super good. Kind of expensive, but super good. Now for the booze, one ounce of dark Jamaican rum. One ounce of Cruzon from the Virgin Islands. Ooh. All brand new bottles tonight. One ounce of dry gin. Let's see here, the Beef Eater from London. I'm starting to realize that there is kind of a there is kind of a lot of booze in this thing. Four ounces of alcohol. It's one of those caps that doesn't close. You just turn. Okay. An ounce of cognac. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that is the cocktail right there. That's a big drink, man. When you start getting into these, these tiki cocktails, some of them just want to hurt you. So earlier in the show, I talked about an elaborate presentation. This particular presentation calls for, this particular cocktail calls for dry ice. I've never used dry ice before. So please excuse the bag. This is a cooler bag that I got from participating in the Grand National Roadster Show. There are some things that I've learned about dry ice and researching this drink. You're not supposed to put dry ice in the freezer because the gases will build up because this freezer is sealed. Gases will build up and potentially explode, they say. You're not supposed to put it in a cooler that is sealable. So a styrofoam cooler is ideal. I figure this is good because it's a breathable fabric. The other thing is that this stuff will burn you. There is the dry ice. Again, don't touch it with your fingers. I need some tongs. I like to pride myself in everything being very decorative and very vintage, but so please excuse my modern, fairly unexciting tongs. Although I bet you they've been using this same shape since 19... 
65. Anyway, our buddy Beach Bum Berry on the Beach Bum Berry Total Tiki app that you should all download because that's where all these cocktail recipes come from. Super authentic and super precise cocktail recipes. Download the Total Tiki app. In the app, he says that this cocktail was presented in a vase. I know it's not a very exciting vase, but I think it'll be cool once we're done with it. And in a chimney glass, I think. So, that looks like that's not gonna fit in there though but we're going through this together, so. So my thoughts are that I'm gonna put this stuff, ooh, down at the bottom of this guy. Wow, man. It's making sounds. Right now I'm just trying to create a platform for this glass to sit on. It sounds like it's breathing down here. This is so weird. Okay, that might be good. I can, I can hear it in there. Shit's alive. Okay, I'm gonna move this stuff and I'm gonna put this out of the way of my dog so my dog doesn't go eating this stuff. So I'm kind of concerned about, wow. So I'm kind of concerned about this coldness breaking this glass, but it's for science, right? So we still need to mix this. We're gonna use crushed ice and So we still need to mix this. We're gonna use crushed ice and then shake it with the shaker. Okay, let's try that again. I think the vintage ice crusher is not gonna to happen tonight. All right, fortunately I have this thing that we're gonna to use to crush the ice with. All right, I really just wanted to pulse it just to try to get the big pieces down. I really gotta get to Sonic and just get a bag of the pebble ice because there's no sense in doing all of this crushing and shaking and stuff. If you can just go to Sonic. Definitely smells fruity. I can smell the cognac in there and the gin. Wow, it's interesting. All right, we're gonna pour that into here. Could probably use a little bit of a bigger glass for this because that was a lot of cocktail, but for presentation's sake, let's try this. And then I will put this down in here. And then I don't know, what do we do? More dry ice? If you know what you're supposed to do, why don't you leave me a message down in the comments below because this is really foreign territory for me here. So we're gonna try more dry ice just to center this thing. I really don't wanna break this vintage glass. Whoa, that one was angry. Hmm, all right, smaller chunks. Okay, I've got smaller chunks. Again, folks, I am not an authority on, on cocktail making or on handling dry ice. So please, please do your own research about this before you go and, and use this stuff. I know that it is very dangerous. Kind of really rare that you see bars using dry ice. Um, one bar I know that used dry ice, at least when I first went there, was Bootlegger Tiki in Palm Springs. And that was like right around the time they were first opening. So I don't know, I don't know how that bar is now and I don't know if they still do those things. And I'm not getting it in the drink. I'm getting it down around the drink. All right. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we can garnish this with some pineapple leaves. Top that off a little bit there. Let's put a straw in it. Found these bamboo paper straws. I thought they'd look cool in here. 
I hate paper straws, but they look cool sometimes. Okay. How's that look? See this, I bet you the straw's already soggy. So the real trick with using dry ice is adding water. These are my favorite tiki drinks because they're so elaborate and it's such a show. It's really, it's really fun. Okay, here comes water. Oh, look at that. Wow, that's rad. And you drink it while it's going. Ooh. That's a really good drink. You would think for how fruity it is and stuff, but there's so much alcohol to balance out all the, like the fruit juices. So, man, that's a cool drink. I wonder if, I wonder if this thing should be up higher so that it sticks out the top. Okay. Okay, so I put an LED in it, backlit it, but can you even believe this going on in 1952? How unbelievable is that? Tiki bars, man. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 1950s, the Bali Bali from the Bali High, New Orleans. And it's just an incredible cocktail. Oh my God, it's so good. It's sweet, but you can taste the alcohol. But then you can taste the passion fruit syrup. Man, there's every fruit in there just about. What, uh, lime, pineapple, orange juice, passion fruit syrup, simple syrup. Of course it's gonna be incredible. It has everything, but it's balanced so well. And that's why you gotta pay attention to the measurements, and, and especially in tiki drinks. It's all chemistry. It's like baking. It's like baking with booze. Baking with booze. Folks, if you like this, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Tell a friend. Share this thing, really. Uh, this was a, I think this is a cool one. And I hope you enjoy tiki drinks as much as I do, because that, man, that's pretty fun. <laughs> it's just so cool. Okay, so it's been about an hour now. And this thing is still doing this thing. I guess I just kind of wanted to warn you that um, there was a violent period with this thing. So after it did all like the beautiful flowing smoke and all that stuff, I think it was air pockets or something in there started like erupting. So uh, I don't think it's something that you would want to have happen if your face was over it and you were drinking. I don't know if that can still burn you or, or what, but it was getting a little concerning, uh, not because I'm scared of losing this vase or whatever, but this is a vintage glass here, and I've had it since uh, since college, and I got it in Stockton for almost nothing, and it's just, I, you don't see them. So now it's uh, it's embedded in this um, icy grave. So I'm kind of hoping that it'll start melting, but dude, it's like, it's full snow going on here. Look at this. It's crazy. <laughs> Anybody that deals in dry ice and cocktails, leave a comment below, because I'm so curious as to how you deal with this. I just don't know the tricks, um, obviously. But I thought it was really cool looking. <laughs> I'm not really scared of it anymore either. It's, um, it's just more like, I want to get that glass back. So, all right, that's all. Hope you dug it.